Hey, welcome back to the Pithy Bikes channel where you get to watch a beginner build a TIG welded steel bicycle frame. Uh, last week I covered the basics of TIG welding and it was just the basics so if you'd like to learn more about that you can check out uh, Jody's videos at weldingtipsandtricks.com it's where I went when I was learning and uh, he covers pretty much every type of weld there is and takes really nice arc shots so you can see what's going on um, alright so uh, this week we're gonna talk about frame design and I'm gonna show you guys what I have planned for my frame so let's get started Alright, first thing you're going to want to do is choose what kind of frame you want. Uh, this here is my uh, commuter bike. It's basically a track frame and it is fixed. And the other bike I ride is a fixed gear freestyle bike. And what I want is something between these two bikes. <laughs> uh, very silly cut, but I'm going to leave it in. Alright, so let's talk about uh, frame geometry and some of the terminology. Uh, so this tube on the top is what's known as the top tube. Um, it also can be just TT, listed as TT. Uh, this tube here is the down tube or DT. Uh, this is the head tube. These are the chain stays. Uh, this thing in here, you can't really see it, but there's a round tube here, and that is the bottom bracket. And these tubes in the back, which connect from the uh, uh, the dropouts to the uh, seat tube, that is the uh, those are the seat stays. And of course, this is the seat the seat tube, which I already referred to. And uh, last, we have the dropouts, which are these little things here. Um, okay, so now let's talk about uh, basic geometry. So the first thing I guess is the uh, the rear axle, and this is the front axle. And if you were to draw an imaginary line uh, from the rear to the front, that's what's known as the uh, axle line. And let's see. So if you're gonna measure the angle of the head tube, you would draw imaginary line down from the head tube and where that hits the axle line that angle there is what's known as the head tube angle and so if you do that with the seat tube it's the same deal uh, usually the seat tube and the head tube are roughly the same angle alright so then uh, let's see what's next you get the uh, the top tube so the top tubes a little more uh, a little bit harder Basically, you take the axle line and you slide it up, and then where that axle line, the difference between the axle line and the top tube, that's what's known as the top tube angle. So pretty much all tubes are measured off the uh, axle line. All right, so then the last part is the uh, bottom bracket drop. You will hear this term, bottom bracket drop, and that refers to the distance that the bottom bracket sits below the axle line. And here's a book uh, called uh, Designing and Building Your Own Frame Set by Richard P. Talbot. Uh, in the book it has a nice chart which lists out all the popular terms you are likely to run into. Um, this book was $70 and that's because the book is now out of print. It's not a very useful book uh, in terms of building a uh, TIG welded frame because it's mostly about building lugged frames. But there's some nice pages in here like this one which shows this guy here on the left It shows how to measure your anatomy. And then on the right there's this chart which uh, will give you uh, the recommended seat tube length and top tube length based on your uh, sizes. Uh, there's also other places you can get information like this. Uh, one place you can go is the uh, bikeforums.net and there there's a, a thread which I will post a link to and there's 
In that thread you can find a link to a geometry calculator, which will pretty much do the same thing. Thank you good folks over at bikeforums.net. Alright, here's a program called BikeCAD Pro and this is what I use to design my frame. It's good for beginners because it's really easy to use. And this is the paid version, but they also have a online flash version that is free. Alright, without getting into too much detail, I'm gonna quickly go over what this what I use the program to do. So you can uh, customize your different parts such as the uh, the seat or the uh, the cranks or whatever types of dropouts you're using. Um, the forks, all that sort of stuff. So the first thing I did was I customized all my parts and then I went to the frame uh, what is this? Uh, the frame primary dimensions and I started messing around with what kind of geometry I was looking for. So once I uh, figured out my geometry I saved the file and I'm opening it right now here so you can see it. Uh, okay, so this is what I ended up with, and uh, you can see I hit all the other parts. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show those other parts. So as I, I was designing this, I realized that it was hard to kind of get a, a feel for my angles and sizes. So uh, nice thing about this program is it lets you bring in an image. So I brought that in, and once you display it, you can see your frame. Um, overlay it on top of it so this was really useful to give me an idea of what size I was building compared to my track frame. On the right I'm uh, messing around with this panel which lets you display the different sizes. Uh, it also has uh, angles and pretty much everything that can be measured on this frame you can display it. Uh, so what I did was I displayed the stuff I wanted to, I hid my wheels and all that other stuff and I printed it out. Alright, this of course is not a printout. This is a life-size drawing of the frame, but I used the printout to uh, create this drawing based on the angles and the tube lengths. Uh, one of the tools I used was this angle gauge. It's a pretty cheap angle gauge I got off of Amazon, but it worked really well. And I tried using this other angle gauge first but it was way too small so I ended up getting the larger one. So the last thing I'll say about uh, having a life-size drawing is I highly recommend this for a beginner because uh, you get to see how large your frame is in real life and you get to do what I'm doing here which is like test up your tubes and make sure your tube sizes are correct and um, yeah get a feel, just get a feel for the size of your frame. So the next thing I did was did a top-down drawing of the back end of the frame. And uh, here's the tire, here is the bottom bracket, this is the chain ring, the crank arm, and these are the dropouts. Uh, this is the rear axle. And so the reason I did this is to make sure that the uh, the chainstay, which I'm holding right here, uh, I'm making sure that it's going to fit between the uh, the tire and the chain ring because it's a really tight fit. Because this tire is pretty large, it's a uh, I think it's a 2.2.5 inch, I think 2.25 inch. And so what I did was I put another piece of tracing paper on top, and I kind of drew out how I would need to either bend bend the chainstay or uh, pinch it so that it can fit in there and obviously it's not going to work. Uh, not with a 2.25 inch tire. So I'm going to have to go with something smaller. Alright, here's the new drawing I did and I dropped in a 1.75 inch tire. Here's a drawing of how I thought I was going to pinch it but I decided not to do that. I decided to bend it instead and pinch it on the outside and also I moved this junction point in so that uh, there's space to weld onto the bottom bracket. 
I'm 90% sure that when it comes time to bend these chain stays and make this little uh, squish this over here, that I'm going to screw this up. And I'm okay with that. Thanks for watching, and uh, sorry this one took so long to put out. If you liked it, please subscribe, and I will see you guys hopefully next week.